gentleness, this power. Treating yourself like a newborn baby child is accepting and rejoicing in the message that every day is brand new. And your past does not have to determine who you are right now. I'm just looking for my slide key, but if I can't find it, I'll just carry on without it. <laughs> okay. So, if your first response, there we go. Thank you, Larry. If your first response to that title, you and your power, was me, power, what power? Join the club. There are times in our lives when we may feel that we have no power. That's a falsehood. That's the first falsehood. We all have power. And we at Unity know that that power comes from inside, not outside. Heaven forbid if it came from outside, look around us at COVID, we would feel powerless all the time. And how can you be happy when you feel powerless? So today's message will be about choosing to be happy, about claiming, identifying, practicing your power every day. And I'll be sharing stories of three people who exemplify the use of power in challenging circumstances. One is a celebrity, one is an everyday person, and one is someone who passed on. And in hearing these stories, I hope that you will reflect on your own power. Last week, we heard Eric Butterworth talk about choice. And it was a powerful message about choice enabling us to access our inner divine spirit. We choose it or not. We choose thoughts and feelings. We can choose to repress or press down all the anguish inside, or we can choose to open up and release it. And you'll hear a lot in the few next few minutes about opening rather than staying closed. Second falsehood about power. The only way to get power is to be rich or control people or have everybody love you. False. Everybody will never love us. And no matter how wealthy we are, that's no guarantee of power. That's external stuff. And the third falsehood, well, I've just never felt powerful. So how can I be powerful now? That's false. And let me share how. Next slide, I think. <laughs> Principle three. We believe this, we learn it in unity. Do we really absorb it? I'd like you to read it along with me. Human beings, that's you and me, were created in freedom and choose their experiences according to their thoughts and feelings. So I ask you, just take a little pause. We've all experienced COVID in some way. We may have loved ones who've suffered the actual disease and been put in the hospital. Have you let that bring you down and crush your spirits? Or have you gone inside, inside to that divine presence and said, this isn't going to crush me. I am going to choose hope, love, and faith. You get to choose. We're all surrounded by this. 
there are members of our community who've actually had COVID. And we know some of them. And there they are on prayer, smiling, throwing kisses, throwing hugs. They are choosing the positive aspect. And the next part of our principle, all manifestation begins with a thought and expresses with feelings. What are you thinking right now? Are you thinking, well, that sounds too simple. <laughs> no, it's not simple. But we can change our thinking. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he, from Proverbs. As she thinketh in her heart, as you think in your heart, so are you. If you think, I feel so sad, I feel so miserable, oh, then guess what? You're going to be sad and miserable. Let's move on to hear a little bit more about what happens when we put this principle into practice. This is a book that was given to me two weeks ago, and some of you have read it. I know that at least three people have, and I thought, it was published in 2007. How did I miss this amazing book? Just the title alone, The Untethered Soul, makes me feel excited. If you've read it, please just wave your hand. Oh, okay, so nobody I'm looking at has read it. Maybe some other people have. I want to share some of, some of it. The book begins with an introduction and one of my favorite quotations from Hamlet, the advice of Laertes to his son, Polonius. Above all, to your own self be true. And it must follow as the day, the night. You cannot then be false to any man. And that struck me as a high school student and stayed with me. And for me, it was more about my values and what was important and how I wouldn't commit certain sins. But I've moved beyond that to a different, a different way of meaning. Singer says, well, to your own self, so what is your own self? Who are you? I ask you that. Who are you? If you were to describe yourself in one sentence right now, what would that be? Would it be I'm a wife? I'm a mother? I'm a wonderful hair cutter who can't go and cut hair right now? I'm a lively, joyous person. I'm a yoga practitioner. I'm a recently moved person to Manitoulin and rejoicing in it. There are all kinds of descriptions you could use. And we'll talk about some other descriptions. Moving on. I'm going to go to three chapters in the next slide, please. And just the first sentence, awakening consciousness. The awakening consciousness is so essential. It's talked about by many of our unity leaders. And Singer reminds us that when we awaken our consciousness, we choose to go within and to start observing, to consciously observe, to objectively watch problems instead of being lost in our problems. So what does that mean exactly? Imagine that you are really missing your children or grandchildren. You just want to see them. And all you can think about is how much you miss seeing them. And you keep thinking about that. And as you think about it, you feel sad. 
you feel lonely, maybe you feel angry. So to actually be aware that you're feeling all that and then to say to yourself, right now, I'm filled with loneliness, sadness, and anger. And then to say, I want to be happy right now. So you release the loneliness, the anger, and the sadness on purpose. As you're aware of it, as you're watching it, you let go of the part of you that sees this as a problem because you can't change it right now. Unless you're magic, you can't change it. Last Sunday, I wrote down one sentence that really impacted me from Eric Butterworth's presentation. The only things that really count happen inside. Incident is external. Reaction is our domain. And life without control of emotions is rampaging fires. Do you ever feel as though your emotions are just running your life? Or maybe you've suppressed them so much and pushed them down so much that you feel totally depressed. We'll talk about depression in a few minutes. Experiencing energy or lack of energy depends on our choices. You and I have the phenomenal power to choose. And Singer reminds us, we have an amazing amount of energy inside us. When it's flowing strongly, when that energy is flowing strongly, you know those days when you feel on top of the world and you think, I wish I could bottle this. Why, why today am I feeling so happy? It's no different from yesterday. What, what is it in me that's making me feel so happy that maybe in that moment you chose to not think about problems? And if you can do it, then you can do it now. Because when you release, you're opening up your heart and your mind to a life that is flowing with energy. When that energy is flowing strongly, it restores you, it replenishes you, and it recharges you. We don't feel it all the time because we block our heart. Because we close off to protect ourselves. We need to abstract ourselves from our own mellow drama. Those are singer's words, but I believe it. Because in my life, I know that there have been times when I got so involved in my own mellow drama, my own feeling of ineffectualness, of lack of power, of feeling under control by other people. And it could be by circumstances. That in that moment, in those moments, I forgot all about my own power. Does that ever happen to you? Let's move on to the next message. Experiencing energy, which I just talked about. The experiencing of energy is so exciting. And it can happen, I know, because I had the pleasure of talking with Don Briglio, and I hope she doesn't mind me giving her as an example. Just a few days ago, I talked to her on the phone. She phoned me. She had just come out of the hospital. She'd been in there for many days with tubes stuck all over her head. Do you think she sounded sad or forlorn or poor me? Absolutely not. She sounded... I thought, has this woman been on a picnic somewhere and she's just pretending she was in the hospital? She was joyous. And her energy, Dawn's energy was coming from inside. Other people might've thought, oh, poor me. 
Why did I have to be in the hospital? I don't know if Dawn thought that and released it or if she found a way to feel the energy from inside. I Hats off to you, Dawn, if I was wearing a hat. Kudos to you and you're a wonderful ongoing example. Practice being open. Make a commitment to explore your capacity for receiving unlimited energy. Now, practicing being open means be aware of when you are closing off. I heard on CBC the other day something about cave. Um, I think it was called, what is the cave syndrome? And the cave syndrome, so they explained, was... And I, in a way I can relate with this, we've all been in lockdown. And, and most of us have observed that. We haven't gone out very much, we stayed in. And the cave syndrome is that you think, well, this, this is sort of comfortable. I don't have to deal with people. I don't have to go out and interact and be in social situations that made me feel uncomfortable in the past. This is pretty good. And so we start to suppress any inclination of being sociable. And we call it, I'm adapting. Look at me, I'm so good. I'm adapting to all this COVID, nothing wrong with me. Now, I'm just speaking personally because I find sometimes large groups a little bit, I have found in the past a little intimidating that I sometimes would rather just be in a quiet group. So I'm gentle with myself in that aspect. but. I need to know that I can also open up. That's important for all of us. I want to share a little bit about, and, and I think this might be the next message on here that Larry's so good of showing, of freeing yourself. Ram Das had an interview in 2017 in a Unity magazine. And at the time, he was asked, and, and for those of you who might not know Ram Dass, he was a spiritual leader, and sometimes we quote him. He was asked, how are you feeling? This is Dass's answer to the editor of Unity Magazine. Specify the you. My body is 86 and feeling aches and pains. But me, I'm in here and I'm infinite. Ram Dass had suffered a debilitating stroke in his mid-60s, left him partially paralyzed and made speaking difficult. This interview happened, um, he was 86, it happened about 26 years later. Before the stroke, he played the cello, drove a fancy car, played golf and flew his plane. After the stroke, he couldn't do any of that anymore. The stroke left my right side pretty much useless and it cut those things out of my life. I waited two months and had terrible depression. When I came out of it, and it took him a few years, I stopped looking outside myself for happiness. And he discovered something amazing, that he could find joy inside, that it was there all the time. I started looking inside and I started to feel joy, joy, joy. This was grace. From that point, I was feeling the perception that everything was lovable and the whole universe was giving me love. I identify with I am, with consciousness, which is the one. Now, if he can do it, we can do it. Khalil Gibran, one of my favorite authors and poets, said this, your living is not determined so much by what life brings to you as by the attitude you bring to life. Not so much by what happens to you as by the way your mind looks at what happens. And Michael J. Fox, the next picture, exemplifies that also. You might remember Michael J. Fox as the actor in The Family Show. For many years, he was in that show. And then he went on to the trilogy, Back to the Future. 
He was successful and happy, but in his 30s, he was diagnosed with early Parkinson's disease. He didn't reveal that for many years, but he dealt with it. And he dealt with it in, in positive ways. Next slide, his words. I examined all these things, fear, aging, gratitude, what happened and how I lost and regained my optimism. He lost his optimism, not, not with the Parkinson's because he figured out ways to deal with that, but he had a stroke. And then he had a tumor on his spine. He had to go into the hospital for surgery. He figured out by rehabilitation and practice how to walk again. And he was just on the way to learning how to walk again when he fell in the kitchen. And he said about that, you know the saying, out of lemons make lemonade. He said, I stopped making being a lemonade maker. It <laughs> drove him wild for a while. But then he found out that his new optimism is kind of a little more informed and a little more realistic. You can be a realist and an optimist at the same time. I'm just taking inventory and seeing where that thing fits in the inventory of his life. I ask you to do an inventory in the next week. See where your pain and loss fits in your life. In the way of transformation, we have learned how to observe without embellishment. Just observe how we are, how we're reacting or responding without making it a fancy thing, without coloring it up. Observe without interpretation, observe without explaining. You don't have to interpret how you're feeling. Oh, I'm so sad and I think I'm sad because this, this, and this, and this. You don't have to go through all that. Just observe for 10 minutes. I invite you to do that. And you'll discover the many ways in which, guess what? You are succeeding. Start to observe yourself for 10 minutes and you might up until now, you're only focusing on all the problems and what a wreck you are. And oh, Pauline's talking about power. I wish I had it. Oh, boo, hiss, poor me. Get over it. You know, throw that out, release it, let it go. Just observe the many, many, many multiple ways in which you are being an awesome individual. You cook dinner for your husband, you're on this line. Even though you maybe didn't want to come on and you thought, oh, do I really want to hear a little preach about power when I don't feel powerful? Realize your success and be gentle with yourself and do take the time to observe. And the very next person is someone who I saw in the London Free Press. She won the Women's Award of Excellence. And her name is Amanda Kennedy. Amanda Kennedy at six years old. So if you've got trauma going back to childhood, guess what? So did she. Does she look tra traumatized now? Absolutely not. There she stands. Six years old. She was taunted with racial epithets in school as a little wee girl. And she went home and she told her dad, daddy, what is a dirty Indian? And her father looked at her and he said, you have to learn to deal with this. You're a native person. She decided right then that she didn't want her little brothers going through the same thing. And the award that she received was a breaking barrier award because what she does now is she goes out to schools, she goes to uh, the university, she is a counselor and she teaches people how to deal with bias, how to overcome the bias. Her advice for those who would follow, take care of your mind, take care of your mental health, 
It's only you that can stop yourself. She's all about empowering Indigenous youth and women. She's a Haudenosaunee storyteller and educator. And I conclude, and I know I've gone over a bit, with this quotation from Lao Tzu. By the way, that's what she said. She's learned how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And it might be uncomfortable for you to observe yourself. Because you might say, I don't want to observe myself. I don't want to look at myself. Close the door, open it up and just observe everything about you. Strengths, weaknesses, just observe. You don't have to judge, observe and then release it. Lao Tzu, mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. And instead of saying namaste, I say namaskar. I salute the divinity in you, all of you. Namaskar. I recognize your light, your love, your energy, your faith. And let us go to meditation. I invite you to relax. Relax and be gentle with yourself as if you were a newborn baby. You might want to hug yourself a little bit. You might want to envision yourself as light filled, love filled, the light and the love and your own inner divine presence generated energy is flowing from the top of your head all the way through your whole body to the tips of your fingers, to the tips of your toes. You have the power. You are the power. You are the light. You are the love. You. Yes, you. Each one of you, you have within you a magnificence that can be opened up as you open your heart. And as you choose to open your heart and share your love, you're going to shed this magnificence, share it and let it flow. Big, big message from Singer, choose to be happy. No conditions. Well, I'll be happy if I can see my kids again. Choose to be happy right now, this minute, today. Right now in this meditation, say to yourself, I choose happiness, period. I choose happiness. I choose happiness for each of you. I see you saying that to yourself. And each time you say, I choose happiness, your heart's opening a little bit more, a little bit more like a beautiful flower, like this lovely lily and the lily pad. I choose happiness. My heart is opening, opening, opening. And love is flowing through me and from me. How do you find your power? Observe, be aware, and open your heart. Choose happiness. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Well, Pauline, thank you so much for another inspiring talk. So I made a few sort of notes of some of the quotes that that you gave today. And really, to me, it sort of summarizes your talk. So we need to abstract ourselves from our own melodrama. Oh, my goodness, melodrama in my life. Imagine 
Stop looking outside yourself for happiness. The whole universe is giving me love and mastering yourself is true power. So those are four quotes that you gave today amongst many other quotable quotes. But to me, those, those summarize the talk that you gave today. So I'm very grateful as I'm sure everyone that is hearing this now and will hear it later is as well. So thank you, Pauline. take a moment to thank the source of our abundance, knowing many allow the supply to flow through them to unity of London in the form of financial gifts and ties. We thank those who give spontaneous gifts as they all as they have a call upon their hearts to do. We also see you receiving spontaneous spurts of prosperity as the energy returns to you. We thank those who give regularly in the form of a tithe. We see your understanding of the flow growing abundantly. We thank those who are new to us for giving to us of your time. We appreciate you and hope you come back and considering, consider being a member of our wonderful community. 
Okay, and so now our prayer for protection. And so as Pauline instructed today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a second line to the prayer of protection that really uplifts our power and focuses on the power that we have. So the light of God surrounds me. I am the light. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love of God. The power of God protects me. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. Yay, God. Woohoo! Now we have our peace song. So Larry, okay, so, so firstly, I want to see, say, Peter Foy, you're looking more handsome than ever, I tell you, really great to see you here today, really great to see you here today. I'll send the check in the mail. Oh, okay, good, make sure it's a big one, will you, Peter? It'll be I've certified. Got... Okay, good, it'll be, I, I've got... It'll be certified NSF. <laughs> Okay, because I was just going to say, I'm doing I, renovations, I, so everything you know, I, go I, I long got, way. I got to get, I got to get permission from the boss, and she's listening in. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Catherine? <laughs> it's so good to see you, Peter. I hope you're feeling amazingly well. Well, I've had a rough go the last week or two, but I'm coming out of it now. All right, you know, that's great. What I have doesn't go away. And it only takes a little thing to start it up again and a little thing happened to me. So, hey, all I can say is thank God for getting me out of it again. There you go. And, Great and, to thank, see you, and thank you to the lady in my life for helping me along with that. You're a lucky man. Hey, don't I know it? Okay, so now does anyone have any comments or questions or anything for our guest speaker, Pauline, today? Uh, Paula. Paula's not. You need no. to unmute yourself, Paula. Well, Paula's doing that. Larry, could you put um, uh, uh, Marianne and I into the prayer room, please? Okay, I, I've unmuted. I, I just wanted to say to Pauline. Um, there you go. Sorry, sorry. I, I just wanted to say to Pauline how clear she is in speaking um, and how important that is for those of us who have difficulty with hearing. Um, she pronounces her words so well. I was just aware of that in contrast to things that are um, brought in. Uh, so I wanted to know that. I also wanted to know um, that uh, I, I do have the book, Untethered Soul. I haven't read it for a number of years, and I'm going to have a look at it again. She's reawakened that. Um, I loved it at the time. And, and when she said Namaskar, my, my um, arms tingled. And you know how 
um, the hairs come up, you know, when there's energy. It was like there was a whole surge of energy came through. And um, it was so inspiring this morning. Uh, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, on holidays, I find it difficult sometimes because when you get past 80, if people know, a lot of people have left you. Uh, but um, my Jeremy often sends me a message on a holiday. And I, I was going through this week, uh, um, two years sailing and bringing out pictures. And um, a couple of pictures came up. When he was in hospital, he, um, I, I gave him a little giraffe and I said, all I want when you're gone is to see that giraffe sometimes or a giraffe. And on holidays, often I do. This, um, yesterday, this appeared. And it's such a funny one. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull it back a little bit so you can see the head. Uh, and um, this morning, when I was looking at, um, when we went to Beckwith, there is the two of us. I'll bring it in closer. We're, we're riding I mean, the Lambretta all around the island. And it made me remember how much energy and power I, I had then. I like to be a person of action. And as you get older, it kind of slows down. Um, so it was lovely to see that. The other one is when I was sailing and Mary, I don't know. Uh, this is all I get when I go into the room. I don't see Sylvia. I can't hear you. Hold on. Let me see if I can get her in. Hold okay. on. Yeah, you gave me the wrong name, Catherine. Personal power. I. I I started going back into my throat exercises and I don't know if you can hear how strong yes. my voice feels yes. right now, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you yeah. for that. And thank you for that reminder of the power that, that is there. So much love to you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you. Other people, other comments for Pauline this morning? Yes, Amber. Mm. making sure I'm unmuted there. Um, I just wanted to say, Pauline, thank you ever so much. That was so profound. Um, I was making a couple of notes of things that you said that um, really stuck with me and, and, and went straight to my heart. So again, thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Amber. And thanks, Sylvia Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good to see you, Sylvia. And Sophia Square, you sound way stronger with your voice. Yeah, boy, oh boy. You'll be back I'll pretty be soon to be our platform assistant again. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, let's hear from you. Yes, good morning, good morning. Our last Sunday in London. Uh -huh. so, all kinds of emotions coming up, uh, feeling so loved and so cared for. And uh, like I just said in our prayers this morning that we're so grateful for this nest that we have created here and we know we can always come back. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Pauline, I just so, you know, I cut my teeth on Ram Dass. I used to go and hear him speak when we'd be in school auditoriums in Seattle. And uh, he was just so cool and so out there and, and I remember thinking, oh my God, I wish I could just be half that calm because I was still pretty uh, energetic, let's call it. <laughs> <That's Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, all, all the reading that we do, you just reminded me that, you know, the Khalil Gibran's, uh, Shakti Gawain's, anything that teaches you to go to your imagination rather than your outer world. 
you know, to stay within and, and that this is a practice, you know, we keep saying this, but it is, it's not something to, to just say, oh, that sounds really nice. Oh, I'm glad Dawn's like that. Oh, I'm glad, you know, this has happened or that's happened. And it was so nice to see Amber handle her, her blindness. And it was so nice to see Sylvia handle her COVID and her father's COVID. It's not easy. It's a choice to go within for that power. And when I do, <laughs> I wish I could do it more often, but when I do, it's everything you talked about today. It's pure joy. All of a sudden, you know, you just love everything and everybody more and, and not in a just a, oh, I love you, but you can't have my beer kind of way, you know, <laughs> but a real genuine, genuine, yeah. genuine heart love. So yeah, what a, what a great talk. I, I was definitely distracted today, but I, I got so much out of what I was able to focus on and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I well, love thank you all. You. Thanks. I can't yeah. wait. I think we'll just come up and do it all in the same room with Wilda for the first time. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be yes. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So Beula yeah. has a little dog with her. I see Beulah's yeah. little dog there. Oh, oh my goodness. Who just nuzzles her neck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Beulah does. Oh, I saw Amber's earlier. Yeah. So any other comments for Pauline or... Anybody else today? Peggy. Oh, Peggy. Yes, Peggy. Yeah. Wonderful talk today, Pauline. You really grabbed my attention right at the opening when you started talking about how we get comfy. We've, we're isolated in our little caves and we think, oh, you know, we're, com we're okay here. But I've found myself really reacting to all of the terrible news that's coming in uh, at us lately with uh, you know, uh, violence happening around the world and, and increasing variants and so on, and trying mm -hmm. to shield myself from that by not not listening to it, not reading it. And, um, and I know I really have the power within me to experience these issues and to um, not look on the bright side, that's a little mm -hmm. facile, but to mm -hmm. not let that drag me down into hiding. So I really appreciated your talk about to remind us how much power we have within us to um, to govern how we how we manage our experiences in life. So thanks very much. Thank you, Peggy. And thanks, Catherine. I didn't want to just ignore you, but I was so intrigued by Beulah's little animal. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You know, I'm total ooh shiny. <laughs> Okay, other comments? Love to hear from Kate today. It's so good to see her. I miss you, it Kate. It is so good to see Kate. Remember yeah. singing on our platform. Oh, yeah. That's great. All right. Well, everyone, continue to enjoy your weekend. Have a great time. Try and get outside and do what is yours to do. And uh, we'll see you next week. Catherine, yes. Larry, and I live from Manitoulin. Woohoo! Reporting <laughs> live from Manitoulin. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's a awesome. reporter on Manitoulin. <laughs> Have a great, safe journey, guys, up there. Nancy, yes. stay on, please. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Bye, love. Yeah. <laughs> great to hear Sylvia getting stronger. Yeah. Okay, Lois and Patsy, see you soon. Hey, Paul, I'm gonna give you a call before we leave. Oh, okay. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squeezing in a lot of stuff. I know the feeling. <laughs> We only have three, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're gone. So, yeah. um, Nancy, I wanted to tell you that Larry is on his way already with your cabinet. Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah, he can just put it in uh, the driveway. It's a paved driveway, and I'll help him out. But, yeah, the doorbells don't work. <laughs> well, just, just be watching for him. It'll only be about 10, 10 more minutes, 15 minutes, 
and he does have a dolly with him. So that he just has, needs help to slide it out of the back of the vehicle. Okay, well, maybe I'll move the car out to the road then so we can get it back to the, the back of the house. Okay. Alrighty. All right. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. You too.